what are the deductions that we take from AGI? We have two deductions, two groups of deduction. We can either take the standard deduction. And what is the standard deduction? The standard deduction is a number given by the government. They say, based on your filing status, you can have a deduction of such and such. Now, for this particular year that we are working with, if you are single or married filing separately, it's 12950 It's printed on the form. Married, 25900 Head of a household, 19400 So notice this number is given to you. Do you have to use this number? Well, you can or notice here or you can t you can use your itemized deduction notice we talked about itemized deduction a minute ago let's talk a little bit more about itemized deduction so itemized deduction goes on your schedule a deductions from agi as i mentioned you will take the greater of these two the it the standard deductions or the itemized deductions now also you can take personal and dependency exemption, but those personal and dependency exemptions, deductions from AGI are suspended from year 2018 to year 2025. So you don't have to worry about them because the law would reset starting 2026 and you will have those deductions, personal and dependency. Now for the standard deduction, every year is different. For example, for year tax 2022, these are the amount. For year tax 2023, these are the amount. Now, these amounts for 2023 could change. Those are tentative, but usually they don't because the IRS already published them. And obviously for the year 2024, every year they increase them. Those will change a little. So if you're looking at this recording 24, 25, 26, those numbers will change, but the concept is the same. The concept is the same. The numbers will change from year to year. Now you said we can either use a standard deduction, which are listed here, just given to you by the government based on your filing status, or itemized deductions. What are the itemized deductions? Well, we're going to have a whole chapter about itemized deductions with several several recording, but we need to take a look at them here. There's a schedule called Schedule A. On Schedule A, what you do, you add up all your medical and dental expenses, taxes you paid, interest you paid. There are certain rules, gifts to charities, casualty and theft losses, and other itemized deductions. What you do for each group, whatever you qualify for, you add them up. And after you add them up, let's assume you, you happen to be single and all of them add up to be 7,000. All of them. They would say, okay, I'm single. What should I do? Should I take the 7,000, which is my itemized deduction, or should I use my standard deduction, which is higher? Well, without thinking, I'm going to use my standard deduction because the government is telling me I can deduct 12,950. If I use my itemized deduction, I can only take 7,000. I would say, no, that's not the case. I will take the standard deduction. Let's assume I add them all up and they add up to be 17,000 instead. I'll go back here. I would say, okay, now I'm comparing 17,000 that I can take an itemized deduction or 12,950. No, thank you, the government. I will take my itemized deduction, 17,000. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept in a moment. Uh, but let's take a look at something called additional to the standard deduction, because the standard deduction is the sum of two components. The basic one, which, which, which I just covered, which is given to you, that's based on your filing status. I showed you the different filing status with a different amount. Again, this number will change every year. Then we have an additional standard deduction. Specifically, we have two additional standard deduction that allowed for taxpayers who are age 65 or over and blind. What does that mean? It means if you're over 65 years old or blind, if you're both, you'll get two additional standard deduction. Now, the amount of those additional standard deduction, again, depend on your filing status and they change from year to year. Now, just to give you an example for the year 2022, if you are over 65, and and older or blind for the age you will get if you're single you'll get 1750 which is an increase of 50 dollars from the prior year because 2021 was only 70 
1700 this tells me that in 2023 it's going to be different in 2024 it's going to be different so on and so forth married taxpayer or qualifying widow or widower 1400 it's again an increase of 50 dollars from the prior year notice if you're single you're getting more deduction here again for each instant if you're over 65 you'll get you know if you're single you'll get 1750 and if you're blind you'll get 1750 together you will combine both deductions let's take a look at an example here after renting an apartment for a while david and sarah a married couple filing their joint return were able to purchase a home early 2022 the home mortgage interest for the year amounted to 10200 they paid property taxes of 5600 they also made charitable contribution of 7000 and they paid income taxes of 4100 now you don't have to know this but all these are itemized deductions again we're going to have a whole chapter about itemized deduction what should dave david and sarah do should they take their standard deduction or should they take their itemized deduction so what you do is you say okay what is my standard deduction if i go to year 2022 again for the sake of illustration you could be in a different year married couple they have a deduction of 25,900 so now we know the standard deduction is 25,900 now what they do is they would say okay this is my standard deduction let's add up all our itemized deduction 10,200 plus, plus 5,600 plus 7,000 plus 4,100 well I have itemized deduction of 26,900 you will tell the government thank you for your offer but I'm gonna itemize therefore you will take the itemized deduction of 26,900 rather than taking the standard deduction let's take a look at an example that illustrate the additional deduction Sarah who's unmarried which is single up used to opt for itemizing her deduction However, upon turning 65, her itemized deduction were 13,500. So her itemized deduction 13,200, her standard deduction as single 12,950. So you would say she's going to take her itemized deduction. However, remember, because she turned 65, in addition to the 12,950, she qualified for the additional 1,750. Now her standard deduction is 14,250. She's going to say, well, I am not going to add up all my I'm not going to use all my itemized deduction I will skip that I don't have to prepare schedule a I don't have to prepare schedule a this year I'm simply gonna take the government deduction 14,250 why because it's higher than my itemized deductions you need to know that the standard deductions are not allowed for certain taxpayers under what circumstances if you are married by filing separately and one of the spouse itemizes the other one will have to itemize matter of fact this year a friend of mine that's what happened with them he's one of my best friends his spouse itemizes he had to itemize actually they're going through some marriage issues but that's a different story so under those circumstances if your spouse itemizes you have to itemize because they filed separately also non-resident aliens if, ha if you happen to be in the u.s and you are not a resident alien you cannot take those standard deduction because those are giving for citizen by the u.s government let's talk about standard deduction for dependents so if you're a dependent simply put you are claim on someone else's return i'm showing a child but if you're claim on someone else's return okay if you can be claimed as a dependent by another taxpayer you don't have, you don't have to be a child to be a dependent i'm just having this picture kind of to uh, kind of grab your attention your standard deduction for 2022 again these numbers will change but the point is the standard deductions for dependent are different it's the greater of 1150 or if you are working your earned income plus 400 dollars but you cannot exceed 12950 which is your standard deduction simply put if you are not working and you file a return you have some income well you'll get a standard let's assume you have some interest income of four hundred dollars well guess what you will report this income and then you would say i have a standard deduction of 1150 it's gonna wipe out wipe out my income if you have earned income your standard deduction becomes four hundred dollar plus your earned income but when you add those up they cannot be 
they can be more than 12,950, but the maximum you take is 12,950. And this number is not fixed 12,950. This number will change from year to year. For year 2022 happens to be the standard deduction for single. So in a different year, you know, it cannot exceed, for example, 2023, I believe the numbers are out, 13,000 something. I don't know the number, I just showed it to you on the prior slide for single. Also bear in mind that additional deductions are available for blindness, for example. Let's take a look at a few examples. A blind child who earns $200 is claimed by their parents as a dependent. So what is the this blind child standard deduction? Well, their standard deduction is the standard one, which is 1150, plus the additional standard deduction in total of how much? 2,650. So if they file a return, that's their standard deduction assuming they have no income that will be their standard deduction if they have income what we do is we'll take 400 plus their earned income and we only use it if it's greater than 2650 but it cannot be more than the standard deduction let's assume a child earns 1500 and is claimed by their parents as a dependent now if they earn 1500 well they don't want to use the 1150 if they earn 1500 what's their standard deduction well it's the greater of what the greater of 1150 or 400 plus earned income which one is greater well 400 plus earned income 400 plus 1500 is 1900 therefore their standard deduction is 1900 let's take a look at a third example a child who earns 13800 and is acclaimed by a dependent what's their standard deduction well we have to compare two figures 1150 or 400 plus their earned income well obviously their earned income is greater than 1150 so we'll take this one out so if we take 400 plus their earned income they're gonna get 14,200 can they take 14,200 and the answer absolutely not why because the standard deduction for single is 12,950 and this will be their standard deduction because they cannot take the amount of 14,200 that will be nice but they can't because it's above the standard deduction that happens to be for this particular year which happens to be 2022 which could be a different number 2023 2024 so on and so forth so you just have to know the concept what should you do now go to Farhat lectures look at additional lectures mcqs true false notes that's going to help you understand your course whether you are preparing for your cpa enrolled agent uh, exam or any other professional certification invest in yourself invest in your career good luck study hard and of course stay safe